Welcome to Marifado. The title of our discussion today is Your African Kingdom South of Egypt. This is part one. For an awakened uh, melanin-dominant brain, our kingdoms include powerful ones and older ones south of Egypt. Are there descendants of these older kingdoms south of ancient Egypt? Why have we been conditioned not to concentrate our thoughts and our ideas and our culture on the kingdoms that are found south of ancient Hamid or Egypt? Do you know? The name of those kingdoms or of that kingdom yes that kingdom is commonly called nubia but there are many 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 others but in this one today we want to concentrate on the modern state called sudan the late teacher dr Hendrik clark said the following statement concerning a blackness we are using blackness here as an adjective not as an authentic and final term black tells you how you look but it does not tell you who you are. I think the great mind here was alluding to a lot of very complex psycho spiritual concepts and the thoughts and the philosophies. Sudan is the country south of Egypt. Africa's new nation was born and is in trouble. And that Africa's new nation is South Sudan. The first civil wars were fought between the Arab led Khartoum government. In the north and the rebels in the largely christian and animist south when they say animist they mean bantus they mean the belief system that is original and the most ancient belief southern rebels were fighting for regional autonomy as well as a representation in the government why was there a very long war a civil war was fought in the Sudan. This is the timetable of South Sudan in terms of its attainment of independence, which we do not agree and support because the whole of Africa is ours. We cannot fight for peace meals and live invaders, colonizing and living and claiming to be indigenous in regions that are all ours. The melanin dominant tribes in the Sudan stopped the total Islamization of Africa in battles that are known in history. Christianizing forces established these kingdoms or areas, Nobatie, Makuria, and Alode. However, they failed to convert everybody and many original tribes in this area are still keeping their authentic faith that they received from our ancestors first moves first we need to establish clear principles when we are looking at history from marfado perspective these will inform us of every step that we are taking whether we're looking into the current affairs into the future or into the past especially when we are dealing with the powerful empire south of egypt first there is no middle east we do not recognize Middle East, but when you know, you should never refer to anything called Middle East. It's all North East Africa. It is all Africa from the Suez Canal right up into so-called Asia. Asia, Africa, and Europe are one continent. There was no Middle East. You can watch our video entitled the same. There is no Middle East on YouTube, in our, on our channel, and you discover a lot of information. So Sudan is not part of Middle East as many other scholars and literature and academics want to tell us that it is part of Arab League. It is not. There is no Arab League. That is North Africa. Arab League is a title for colonizers. Let's give two more uh, first principles. The original Arab, original Arabs are black. Melanin dominant, Bantus, are Africans. So too with the Nubians. Today, yesterday, and for good. These other ones, 
that we hear of came from Turkey. They are not authentic indigenous Arabs. And that is a fact. There it is, clear, straightforward. Only one true Arab here, him. Not Muslim. There is a vast difference. There again is an Arab preparing barley to make grain. This photo was taken in 1943 in Saudi Arabia. Again, a young woman in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia, 1918. This is the authentic one. Anyone else who does not look like a Bantu or a Muntu is not indigenous into that area. 1943 Life magazine did an article on Arabs in Jerusalem and did actually include real Arabs here. They are. Now, we know that they are sellout brothers and sisters that sold us into slavery, that continue to sell us into colonization and sell out our bl black brothers and sisters. Most of them are mulattoes who are the combination of Turkish Europeans that came into Africa and call themselves Arabs now and our own mothers as well as sisters. The intermarriages has produced this type like Omar al-Bashir who destroyed our brothers and fought to destroy them and many, many others that run around with uh, the title of being Arab. Now, number three fact is that Europeans' white skin came later than thought. Studies suggest that it arose around 8,500 years ago. This is scientific. This can be proved anywhere. It's very clear. Therefore, this very interesting observation leaves only melanin-dominant humans as the original Earth species. That is principle number three. So, once as we have set up these principles and we accept these principles, we can now proceed to look into the kingdoms of South Egypt. So, these kingdoms are south of Egypt, or this kingdom south of Egypt, the one we are zeroing on today, and as well as Egypt itself, were originally melanin dominant kingdoms. But the kingdom and peoples of South Egypt are ignored in popular media including movies and education, there is a reason. And why is it like that? Because once you go to look into the kingdom south of Egypt, you are likely to see the descendants of the people that built that so-called Egyptian civilization, Mesopotamian civilization, and Mehonjadaro civilization. Because of the proof that they carry, they are ignored in history. These are the Nubians, the Kushites, so-called Ethiopians. They still retain a huge number of ancient images. And they carry, and they are still authentic. And they are completely different from the Seljukian Turks and Europeans living in Egypt and the north of Africa today. Therefore, the best thing they can do is by omission and are just ignoring them. There is the proof. It is the newer and the Dinka forehead, scars, you can see them, the scars there. You can see them, ancient pharaohs and the rulers. There is no way that you can dispute this. That's why they ignore Nubia and try as much as possible to hide it because the evidence is so obvious. Those that are in many forums that want to laugh and that want to say, hey, you are living in mad hearts. You are not Egyptians. Egyptians are different from you. And they pick up few colors here and so forth. They are just liars. They are people that have no culture. Egypt is not found in Europe. Egypt is not in Asia. The occupants of those areas are not the indigenous people of Egypt. The indigenous people of Egypt are Bantus, so-called Nilots today or Kushites today by uh, scholars. Now, Sudan became independent in 1956. But why did the Republic of South Sudan secede from the north and become independent? There is a very special reason. I think we have all already alluded to it. The decision to secede can be traced to the northern Sudanese government's consistent policy of marginalizing of the southern part of the country. And remember, these countries were drawn at the Berlin Conference for a purpose, divide, rule, and conquer. The British colonial policy in Sudan had a long history of emphasized development of the North Arab portion and largely ignoring the Black South Southern part. And they elected schools, hospitals, roads, bridges, and other basic infrastructure purposefully because the Arabs and the Europeans are one people. Some of them may be mulattoes, but they know each other. At the top level, they are one and the same people. White Arabs are Europeans. 
After Sudan's first independent elections in 1958, the continued neglect of southern region by Khartoum government led to uprisings, revolt and the longest civil war on the continent. Peoples affected by the violence included the Akoli, the Anyuaka, the Baka, the Balanda, the Viri, the Bari, the Boya, the Didinga, the Dinga, the Jie, Kaligi, Kuku, Lotuka, Mundari, Muri, Nilotic, Nua, Shiluk, Toposa, and the Sande. These are the tribes. These are our brothers. This is me. I'm part of these uh, brothers that I'm talking about here. And there, with all of them in South Sudan today, you can see here very clearly the Zande here, the Mandari, the Ju Juba. Juba is a bad in our language as well as the capital city of uh, our new nation, which we do not support and love as such because all of Africa is just one. We migrated from Great Lakes in many waves and directions. The diversity in the kingdom south of Egypt is clean proof of the nerve center of our race on earth. The diversity in Sudan is very clear, Hamitic, Bantu, Black, or whatever term you want to call us. Are Nubians black? Yes, Nubians are considered black. They have always been so historically. Are Nubians Africans? Absolutely. Nubians are, by way of every measure, considered an African people, melanin dominant humans. Why is there confusion now in terms of understanding this? Because of colonial divide rule tactic, divide and rule strategy. Nubia is equally important to Africa just as Egypt or Hamid. These two were connected historically, culturally, and linguistically. Modern day Sudan and Egypt at one time were one country in ancient times, and we know now who divided them. It is the Persians. It is the Greeks, it is the Romans, it is the white Arabs, and it is the Europeans, the French, and the British. It's very clear that is a fact that cannot be disputed. Now we give the uh, historical timeline of ancient Kush, because Kush is the other name for Nubia. Sudan's history goes back to into the original times. Lower Paleolithic, which is 1 million to 500 years ago. We know we have evidence, which we will prove in part two of this post, of 3 billion years ago that we were already on the earth. And 2.5 billion years ago, we had already started to build nuclear power plants. So this is the timeline. Then you get Aculean, according to scholars now. It's evidence of occupation, uh, 500,000 years to 200,000 years ago and evidence of occupation and napping workshops at the summit of volcanoes, pa pa Paleolithic, and all this will come now to Kema, Neolithic, centers El Baga. All these are ancient kingdoms and how we came up to contemporary history today. From the 19th century, the entirety of Sudan was conquered by Egypt under Muhammad Ali dynasty. This Egypt they call about is the Arabic or Arab, so it's not the Egypt. The ancient one. It was under Egyptian rule that Sudan acquired its modern borders. In 1881, nationalist sentiments in Egypt led to the Orab revolt, weakening the power of the Egyptian monarch and eventually leading to the occupation of Egypt by the United Kingdom. At the same time, religious nationalist favor in Sudan erupted in Mahdist revolt led by the self proclaimed Mahad Muhammad Hahamad, resulting in the establishment of the rebel caliphate of Omdurman. So that's the history that we need to understand. Here is the kingdom south of Hamid predates Christianity, Islam, Judaism, Hinduism by millions of years. We have already proved that. So you can see here uh, major events and periods, the Neolithic group, the trade with early Egypt, uh, trade in Portali in Nubia. And then you have kingdoms like Kerema, they call Kerema, uh, Napata, Marua, Makuria. Uh, then after that, you got these are the Christian kingdoms and the islamic kingdoms came later islam is a new religion so these are our brothers and sisters the nuba one of them the nuba tribes one of the oldest tribes there and again the nilotic people are located along the river nile in the area of the sudan two 
tribes migrated to the south. They became the Tutsi and the Maasai. The Cushitic speakers stretch from the Red Sea through the Horn of Africa. The Bantu speakers are further south. They include the Kikuyu of Kenya and the Hutu of Rwanda. And they went as far as southern part of Africa. Define certain uh, terms. We have to cast away colonial name. The term Sudan is not ours. This was uh, also known as Sudan right up to West Africa. It is the, the term Sudan itself is an Arabic term for land of the black. And today it is like that the Maghreb and the Guinea and Sudan, they call it that. So we do not need to use this term. We should never continue to use this term. It is the term coined by colonizers. These are terms of confusion. And some say Nilotics are not Bantus. Here are two images. Can you spot any difference between him and uh, him? He is a South African youth uh, around 1874 to 1954. And he is a wrestler, a Dinka wrestler. Here. Yeah. What's the difference there? There's no difference. None at all. We are one people. So words should not divide us. Not at all. Again, the Nuba and Latuka, the same people, Bantus. I am part of them, part and parcel of uh, these people. Again, the love of cattle by Bantus is same the love of cattle by our brothers, so-called Nilots in Nubia, in the Chad, right up to West Africa. This is our trade. This is our breed. So there are no two ways that we, we can not be the same people. The etymology of the word nilotic came to us and came into use via the Latin form Greek nailoticos and also nilus, the Roman one, which they used to name the river Nile. The actual name for the river now is Hapki, one that never dries. One that never runs dry. Now, melanin dominant humans, known as nilotic abantus. I am a nilotic myself. It doesn't matter what you call me. Luos, Kushites, Egyptians, we are just one people. That's a fact. All these gymnastics, academic gymnastics, are there to divide, rule, and continue to rule. Divisions came from religions, colonization, and the strategies like the Berlin Conference, colonialism, and total ignorance. Driven by idiotic tribalism among us is what causes these divisions. And yet I've shown you images that prove that we are one people. The way to get started is to quit talking and begin doing. This is what Marifado is doing. This is your movement. This is your organization, Marifado. And this is your channel. Share it. Collaborate with us. Join us. Send an email at join at marifado.com so that we can spread this kind of knowledge across the whole earth. We will go back into the last million years of the kingdom south of Egypt in part two. Make a debt with us. Watch this space as we continue to restore our true identity by restoring true history. Subscribe to our channel, Hamidi Buru Ethics. This preacher Rabbi L.M. Dumizu saying we are rebuilding our greatness. Have a great day. Asante sana. Siabonga. Tatenta edupe. Let's meet in part two.